So as we continue our introduction to meiosis, um, in our previous video we mentioned the idea of reproduction. And reproduction is a sort of topic that you have to understand before you actually get into the process of meiosis. And we established what asexual reproduction was. We stated that asexual reproduction is simply the idea of sameness, producing the same offspring from the same parent because we usually live in the same environment. This idea of stability and this idea of having genetically identical offspring is something that's key to asexual reproduction. It's a very easy process. All it involves is splitting or fragmenting or budding off, and it involves a very little amount of time and thus a small amount of energy. Now it's time to look at what I consider definitely the more interesting type of reproduction, the one that we um, as humans, of course, undergo, and this is sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is simply the idea that we have a union of two gametes. This is the goal of sexual reproduction, the union of two gametes. What I simply mean by this is that we are going to have a haploid gamete combined with another haploid gamete to give us a diploid zygote. And this process right here, this process of combination, something you can write underneath the arrow or the process that actually is involved here, is the idea of fertilization. So I'm just going to write F-E-R-T with a dot. Through fertilization, we get a diploid organism eventually. And we can actually put some names to this. This haploid gamete can represent, let's say, the sperm, the sperm cell. And let's say that combines with what? This other haploid gamete can represent then the egg cell. And through the process of fertilization, we're going to end up with a diploid, and I mentioned this very uh, quickly, uh, a diploid zygote it's referred to as. And a zygote is simply a fertilized egg. Once you fertilize the egg with the sperm cell, you've created a diploid zygote. And this zygote is always, always, always going to be in terms of its ploidy, and what I mean by that, when we say ploidy, I'm writing it up here, is is it 2n, 2n, or n? That's a question that you're going to be asked of a lot. Haploid or diploid? The zygote is always, 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 right above it, you can see, always diploid, because it's always the combination of sperm and egg haploid cells, giving you a diploid result. That's what we mean by the union of two gametes, and you can sort of continue on by saying the union of two gametes forming a diploid zygote. That is sexual reproduction in a nutshell. But we also want to make sure we understand is that the results of sexual production produce offspring that are not, 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 not genetically identical. And when we're referring to genetically identical, what, are we, what do we mean? Not genetically identical to who? Of course, we're referring to the parents. The end result, this would come from a dad and this would come from mom, would create a, it would create a child. That child is not genetically identical to the mom or dad. That child is the combination of the genes between the mom and the dad. But how do we get that combination? Where do we see that combination form? And what we're going to notice is that meiosis specifically is going to promote this idea of combinatorial genetic differences, genetic variation. And that's something we're going to be seeing underneath this realm of sexual reproduction. Furthermore, what we can establish is the advantage the overall advantage is so simple, but I think it's the most important thing for studying many things in biology. The overall advantage of sexual reproduction is very simple, and it's two major words, genetic variation. That's all I need to say about that. Genetic variation is the absolute most amazing part of sexual reproduction of, I think, life as a... As an entire in its entirety because genetic variation promotes all the differences that we see amongst let's say humans you look unless you're an identical twin of course you look completely different than somebody else and this is because of genetic var variation genetic variation helps promote the form the formidable let's say success of a species 
This is something you have to keep in the back of your head as we undergo the steps of meiosis. Because meiosis, its end-all, be-all goal is to promote genetic variation because this is one of the greatest advantages of, let's say, sexually reproducing. This is one of the greatest advantages of being an organism that can capitalize on the ability of, union, of creating a union of two gametes like we mentioned before. Lastly, what I want to mention, and this will definitely get us into meiosis big time, is the idea of why do we use meiosis? What is meiosis and what does it mean? Well, specifically, what we need to understand is that when the gametes combine, you have chromosomes, let's say, coming from your mom and your dad. But what you don't want in this combination, let's say, is both of these to have, um, let's say, let's imagine that we have, we have how many chromosomes? As human beings, we have 46 chromosomes, and those 46 chromosomes are in uh, 23 pairs. What we have to make sure is that when we combine sperm and egg, we have to make sure that that combination gives us 46. We have to make sure that sperm has 23 chromosomes and egg has 23 chromosomes so that we create a diploid 46 chromosome zygote. But how do we do that? If I told you that most of our cells, and we've established this before, are 46 chromosomes, how do we get these specific sex cells to 23? That process, that process of taking these gametes, these gametes absolutely need, 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 need to have half chromosome number. They need to have half the amount of chromosomes as, they norm, as a normal body cell does, as a normal somatic cell does, because when we have this combination and this union, we have to make sure that it adds up to 46 chromosomes. We can't do that unless we utilize the process of meiosis. This is how we get half. Meiosis can be literally defined as the process, a process that's devoted to make smaller. Specifically, to make the chromosome number smaller. That's what meiosis literally defines itself as. And how do we do this? What separates meiosis from mitosis? Meiosis involves two distinct divisions, two distinct separating events. Mitosis involved how many? Only one. Mitosis involved prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis. That is going to happen twofold during meiosis, and there are going to be very important distinctions during this whole process. So through these two divisions, through these two Meiotic divisions, um, you're going to create, you're going to actually start with, let's say, let's imagine we start with a diploid cell. That's what happens. We start with a diploid cell, but I'm going to divide it twice. I'm going to divide it twice so that we end up with, so this is our, let's say, division one, um, and then we have another um, division event that's going to end up with our end-all, be-all goal, and this is something you should know, of four haploid cells. We go from one diploid cell to what? To four haploid cells. One, two, three, four. And we undergo meiosis one and meiosis two. Don't worry too much about these details just yet. This is what the next several videos are devoted to, the process of meiosis and how we go from this one diploid cell into four haploid cells. Again, why are we going back to haploid? What is the purpose? Because we have to get into a state that is like this. We have to get into a 23 chromosome, half the normal amount state, so that we can combine with a 23 chromosome, half the normal amount egg, to create and fertilize a normal diploid organism that is 46 chromosomes, just like every other human being every other normally uh, fertilized human being. And this is the process of sexual reproduction in a nutshell. Creating this zygote through this process in order to get this nice union of two gametes. And let's just understand now the difference. Asexual reproduction is all about sameness. Creating the same from the same, in the same environment. 
And that overall was okay, but we have to understand that sexual reproduction is a huge advantage of genetic variation. We're going to see why as we move forward through meiosis.